Welcome, everybody. My name is Jeremy Epstein. I'm the host of the Decentralized Finance series here on the Decentralized OS series as part of the Singularity Net channel. So please subscribe to the Singularity Net YouTube channel. Our revered guest today is none other than Arjun Kalsi, who's the head of growth at the Matic Network. Now, for those of you who've been following Matic, they've had uh, quite an explosive um, entree onto the crypto scene in the last few months. So we're really excited to dive into all things Matic and all things uh, DeFi. So Arjun, welcome. We're glad to have you on the show. No, oh, thank you. Thank you for having me. And, and thank you for your kind words <laughs> on, well, on Matic Network. You know, it's, it's, been a, it's, it's been a crazy couple of months. I mean, uh, so, so our mainnet went live about, about six months ago. It's this around May, June, July is when we got the made it out and it was stable and, and ever since then right we've seen this like absolutely non-stop uh crazy wave of growth and it, it kind of sort of the timing also kind of was really was really great that when we launched our mainnet that's when the DeFi wave was like right was you hit and the DeFi wave big absolutely just just the right time and and then what what kind of happened was that uh, because of this DeFi wave there was a lot of clogging in the ethereum network right so the gas fees went up uh, transaction times, you know, were stalling out. People ended up, you know, paying lots and lots of gas fees for transactions which potentially failed, right? And it kind of, you know, bought bought forward all those other problems which we had faced when CryptoKitties, uh, when that CryptoKitties episode happened, right? When the entire like network got clogged, and and that's right. when people realized that, you know, there has to be like a better solution for this, um, and uh, and and that's when like lot lots of projects whose whose business models essentially wouldn't, wouldn't survive something like this, like you know, started looking around, started doing some research. And, and and our mainnet live, you know, went live at the same time. So so it was, it was, it was through that you know starting point where we were we, where we were able to have these discussions around performance and on reducing gas fees. And suppose gas fees is not existent, like you know, wouldn't, wouldn't that be great? And you could still be a part of Ethereum. And and on the basis of that, like we were able to sort of build that momentum. Um, and again, you know, the same problems have happened. Uh, it's good times in the in the crypto market. But, it is. But, but let's let's take a step back, Arjun, for those people who might be joining who maybe aren't familiar with Matic and we can talk about it. Let, let's just, I mean, you've had a great run. Obviously DeFi is blowing up. We all know that. And anyone who spent more than 12 seconds in DeFi <laughs> understands the pain with ridiculously high gas fees. We're all familiar with that, but let, let's take a step back. So, you know, you went mainnet live in June, but at some point earlier, like the team had a vision for the problem yeah. that Matic wanted to solve. How, how do you think about, how did you see a problem in the future and start to build towards that? Uh, definitely. So, so the company started in 2017. Uh, that's when this entire CryptoKitties episode happened, right? And that's when a lot, lot of people kind of within the Ethereum ecosystem, including the founders, uh, kind of realized, right, that, that without, any, without some serious scalability coming into the system somehow, you know, which would not just reduce, you know, which would not just scale out the network, but also reduce costs, if this is not done, then this entire blockchain thing is never going to get any serious adoption. Like right. no, no corporate organizations, no people are going to look at it seriously. So, so a lot of, lot of discussions happened around that time. That's when, uh, you know, Vitalik came out with this uh, plasma example of how you could essentially build a layer two on mm -hmm. top of the chain, you know, a more high performance layer, right? And, and somehow it is still connected to the main chain so that all your assets still have that security, right? So you get security and scale at the same time. So that's when the founders sort of came across this idea uh, of course, implementing it was another challenge, right? So they have to come up with a system of having contracts on L2 and L1 and then that communication and how that synchronization has to happen. So that's where the vision like sort of really sort of started coming together that this is possible. And now if you're able to actually build this, then, you know, we would be able to attack so many other different use cases, which otherwise, you know, which is simply not possible with, with the way the network was like, you know, if you want to do like sort of bring in social elements, gaming, things like that. Uh, and and that's when sort of this development started. It was it was pretty interesting how how the founders yeah. in a co working space and over, you know over yeah. Tell us a little bit about the backstory. I mean, how did this team to go come together? What makes this team special? What, what's the story there? No, definitely. So the founders, uh, uh, so so uh, the chief architect J D Kanani, uh, who who uh, you know we call J D. So he sort of came up with uh, with the basic you know premise that you know something like this would solve for it. And I remember he was working in a co working space, and the guy opposite to him, who is now the chief product officer Anurag was sitting there and was working on some other startup ideas. So these two guys met and he, you know, JD told him that there's this blockchain thing, you know, we should kind of look into this and, you know, try and figure this out. It might be big. It might be big someday, right? <laughs> right. Big. 
So and, and Anurag is also one of those really, really you know cerebral kind of guys who went back, studied the entire damn thing, you know, over a weekend and on Monday like was there and he was like, okay, this, 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 we can do this and all of that. So that's when they kind of really got together. And then they wanted another co-founder who was also from the crypto space, you know, could you know help them with this journey. That's when they got in touch with Sandeep, who um, who's the chief operating officer. And then the three of them sort of built this, uh, built the team out, you know, built this sort of uh, uh, built the architecture, built all the sort of uh, all the code. And everything which was, you know, which was all the different services you had to build, right? You had to build the wallets and things like that so people could interact. Uh, so that's kind of where the journey started. Um, and, and of course, right from the start, there was this policy of, you know, we're not going to have these cubicles or nothing. So no, no office space was taken. We just took this residential villa as, as sort of the office. And then there was like, you know, the beanbag, space station, whatever. And it was like a very open kind of, Right. Very, very different kind of feel, you know. So the, right from the start, there was this idea that we're working on something so new and, and so unexplored that we're not going to go with that mindset that let's do this office, let's get cubicles, let's be hyper-organized and things like that. So there was like complete freedom to think and do what you wanted. So so through that process kind of came this, uh, came sort of this whole idea of Matic together. And and uh, and of course, you know, like when you're always solving for the future, like other problems come up, right? So, so sure. for example, now, if you look today, the narrative is more around things like optimistic rollups, ZK rollups, and you know the march of technology just keeps just keeps going on. I mean, the crypto space especially, it's so nuts, right? I mean, so every, fast, so fast, right? Every three four months, something changes, boom! Like you know, the ideas have changed and flipped. So so again, with the eye on the future, again, you know, some interesting bold new designs um, have been sort of conceptualized around what we want to do at Matic, and you know, we'll be making some of those. Uh, announcements in the next uh, couple of weeks. So let, let's uh, let's talk about Matic for a second. I mean, you know, my my background's in marketing. So even though I'm a crypto geek and what you know, deep down, I got to ask. Like, look, we all know that there's a scalability problem with with ETH one. Mm-hmm. Hopefully, some ETH two solving there. Yeah, you guys are super smart and hardworking and passionate and what have you. But there are a lot of super smart, hardworking people out there who okay. are trying to tackle this. What makes Matic unique, different, better than other possible solutions out there for scaling with security? Got it, got it. So again, you know, uh, number one question, and 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 it's 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 like this, right? So so the kind of solution, so it's like this. So so scaling is a technical problem, right? So and and for any technical pro- problem, there are bound to be many solutions, just like you said, right? There's so many out there. Everybody says the same thing. You know, we're so fast, so cheap, and all of that. But I, I think, I think this. So you need to solve for a bunch of things. You know, before, before you sort of really start. You know, if you look beyond the marketing, there's so many different problems you need to solve. You know, to be able to deliver scale at very low cost, right? Mm-hmm. So now you need to make sure your assets are secure. So there has to be a plasma element, right? So that's what in Matic, for example, all your transactions are sort of Merkle rooted, and there's a checkpoint on the Ethereum main chain, so that Ethereum main chain always knows. What's happening? So you have to solve for that. At the same time, you need to build a decentralized network, right? So you can't run these, you know, sort of centralized nodes and then, you know, try and orchestrate this whole thing and try and sort of like show performance, but it's really not a blockchain network. It's like a centralized system. You don't want that either. So you need to build a very decentralized network. So you need to come up with this policy, you know, get people to build nodes, get the apps to, you know, sort of start running validators. So currently we have uh, you know, 81, uh, last I checked today, 81 validators. So we're probably more decentralized than many layer one networks uh, to that extent. So there had to be a high degree of decentralization as well, mm-hmm. right? And also when you talk about these concepts that you build, a, you know, the decentralized sort of network is a proof of stake network. So it's very high performance, right? So, and and you need to sort of build that reward ecosystem around that. So when you when you bring all of these elements together, that is only when you can deliver scale at at you know high security. And then you have to solve the third problem of production readiness. See, all of this sounds good in theory. Like we can keep discussing this and wow, we can do this, we can do that. But, but are you production ready? Now, now just, let me just give you an example. So during the U.S. elections, right, when uh, a couple of months back, like uh, there was frenetic action in prediction markets, right? Like people are going crazy. Also, what we noticed were other interesting trends: how prediction markets turned out to be more accurate than any. Right. Sort of uh, soothsayer, you know, in from like the polls or whatever, yeah, whatever, right? Very interesting. But but what happened on the Matic network? So we had this uh, prediction market, Poly Market, which had launched on Matic, right? In a few in a few hours, they saw ten million dollars worth of USDC um, in transactions just flowing through the Matic network, and our network performed without a hiccup, right? And this wow. continued. This frenzy continued for like a couple of days, you know, when the especially when the results were hanging in the balance, and there were like all of these theories being thrown around, so. So during this entire time, right, like early in the in 
early after the launch of our like sort of main net we go we went through this battle testing phase right where we really our network is really kind of like you know put through its paces and that's what that's what we say is the biggest like magic advantage is that we are production grade right and also like what we also realized so all of this is technology right and you can always talk better technology and you know sure. you can keep talking technology but why was blockchain invented in the first place right so it was invented to create a trustless society right that all of us can transact freely and it doesn't matter who you are across the globe right no middlemen no third parties so what that means is that in any blockchain project or ecosystem what takes precedence over everything else apart from technology is community right what are you doing to enable and build your community how are you enabling them what are your what are the kind of programs have you come up with right so this is what we always say about matic that we are a developer first ecosystem right we have tried to make things as easy as possible for developers so for example for if you're developing for matic it's develop it's the same development process as that for ethereum we use the same development environment right all our tokens are also erc tokens mm-hmm. so there's no special type or anything like that so anything which you can do on ethereum you can do on matic everything of course it's faster and cheaper but that's essentially how we wanted to design it like have lots of grant programs uh, you know uh, take uh, you know put aside like a big budget to support every global hackathon like anything you know any major hackathon anything you know which some interesting daos are doing you know go there contribute contribute to the ecosystem and it's basically this kind of sort of system of making sure that you know we go with this developer first ecosystem first approach right technology aside like all the technology right. aside just if we just take this approach we will we will do the right thing and that's kind of what has been our like mindset how, how do you so that's really interesting i mean you you went mainnet live 6 7 months ago you've got 81 validators how how are you which is great and you you have 10 million dollars worth of prediction markets flowing through during the elections what you just like this couple of months back so <laughs> nice Not yeah bad. so what are you know as head of growth what are some of the metrics that you look at to sort of ascertain the the health of the network overall Okay so great great question right so so this is again there's no real, real you're already on the show you don't have to compliment me Andrew that's fine right right no what i meant by that was that like you know like like it's such a interesting problem to solve right when i think about it also daily but like how i have structured my thought process behind this is see the number one metric for me number one metric from which everything flows is adoption mm right see we i'm not we are not in matic network we're not into this like you know token pumping dumping game you know token goes up down all that is fine but we have a 10 year horizon that we want to build that kind of infrastructure so that means you need to work with the most important metric which is adoption like no adoption means nothing it doesn't matter what your token value is it doesn't matter right right like, no adoption means you're a dead project so now when you have adoption it now adoption means a couple of different things right adoption definitely means more dapps should build on matic right now if you want to build more dapps like for example let's say you want dots of dapps on your on your network you need to do a couple of things number one you need to make it easily easily you need to make it easy technically what does that mean good documentation tutorials second thing you need to go a step further so you offer tech support so any dapp which works on matic gets tech support so anything goes wrong while deploying before deploying after deploying any tech questions you have anything you can always ask us and we'll always respond on telegram like we set up these groups with every team right third thing is you need to do marketing support right because you can have all the best brains in the world build you know the best d apps but if you don't market them the right way if you don't help them get those customers get that adoption you're not going to solve anything right so for me to have lots of transactions happening i need lots of customers i need great developers but i need lots of customers so we offer marketing support mm-hmm. so we have a dedicated marketing team in matic which sort of you know through which we help you like make banners write medium articles things like that ideate with you figure out marketing campaigns emas airdrops whatever have you right we'll we'll work with you and you know we'll help you sort of execute those as well right so so then the philosophy becomes very simple that if the dapps on your network are successful then you're automatically successful and then working back from that metric and that thought process it becomes easy that's i mean you're almost like a you're a full service network in some respects like we you're plug and play we help you out from cradle to grave you have to make it easy i mean yeah. you know already like blockchain is not a easy space to understand for most web2 developers it takes them a while to wrap their heads around these concepts so if you don't make it easy you are setting yourself back so like where that, are we now on matic in terms of the number of dapps number you know adoption what kind of usage are you seeing just give us a little snapshot of right. where you're doing and 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 within that i would be curious to know do you see any type of specific 
vertical or areas that are becoming strong or you're developing some core competencies? Like are people migrating Matic for a specific reason? Sure, sure. So uh, now in terms of some of the metrics, right? So on average, on a daily basis, we're hitting about 50, 55,000 transactions. Uh, we want to scale that to 100,000 transactions. You know, that's that's sort of the target I've taken in the next, like, let's say a couple of months. What we are also seeing, we've so we've blown past like your, you know, other metrics, like 150,000 plus wallets. We've blown past like 4 million transactions and like, you know, we're doing 50K every day. So that number is there. In terms of dApps deployment, we have crossed about 80 dApps deployed. Like we are basically trying to get them all listed on dap.com, dap data, so that we ourselves can keep track because it's so big. But uh, right. that, that's the kind of metric where, you know, where we are at. We've got like in my DAP master sheet, there are about 200 entries. Uh, the last count was 242, but I know there will be like, you know, some, some teams which will have delays and things like that. So, so we've got a huge amount of like sort of adoption already, big adoption also coming. Um, like some of the areas you're talking about. So definitely betting big on gaming. I think, you know, again, is about, is about that magic sort of uh, attribute, which is engagement. Like that's the metric I look for. So lots of, you know, so, so we have a very big, you know, very sort of eclectic gaming ecosystem with prediction markets, betting, social betting developed, uh, neon district, mega cryptopolis, Zedron, like some of the biggest gaming projects are either already on Matic or building on Matic and great adoption there. What I'm also seeing, like, like I said, so prediction markets and gaming prediction markets, many different types. You can have sports betting. You can do social sports betting. Like you and me, for example, can put a bet on like some outcome, right? Then you can bring in other elements into betting. For example, now I'm betting on gaming outcomes, right? So then you start bringing in this esports elements that, okay, you have Web3 gaming. You have all of these gamings. How, why don't we bring blockchain into web, you know, this esports segment and essentially allow players across the world, you know, to participate in big tournaments, huge tournaments and get paid in crypto, right? You take that entire concept of this gaming, right? Which is, like pay to play, right? That you, the game is free, then you keep paying for stuff. We want to make right. it pay to earn. Mm. Where if you're for your engagement, you get like sort of, you know, you make crypto rewards and it doesn't matter where in the world you are, you'll get a reward. So a lot of interesting things around gaming. Then of course you have your DeFi element, like, you know, DeFi is of course, you know, big, we are, are sort of TVL. If you check us out on DeFi, plus, DeFi Pulse, we just crossed Bitcoin Lightning in the... <laughs> In, in sort of the, uh, the volume of funds locked and, you know, that's just rising steadily. Um, so with that, we are seeing like, you know, all sorts of your liquid liquidity, you know, so then there's a segment of liquidity mining where you have all your farms and all your sort of staking, right? Then you have this other interesting market, right? So then see when you are able to get past this basic staking and sort of farming game, right? And when you are on a network, which is fast and where transactions are literally zero, you mm. can do an interesting thing. You can do option trades. You can do derivatives. Right, right. right. So you see capital market, right? Which is basically thousand X the value of the real estate market or something. That right. is, you know, how you can start targeting that and a lot of innovation there. I mean, so many amazing business models and then NFTs, right? Which are becoming popular. The NFT economy in 2021 is going to be crazy. Like we've seen nothing yet in my opinion. And right. with NFTs, you have this amazing combination of technology and content creators, like people who are super technical and non-technical. And when that mishmash comes together, all of this, you know, you're blown away by some of the innovation around how people have now combined DeFi with NFTs. Like you stake an NFT and you get like some token reward, then you can stake. Like, interesting. I know. And then you can use it for, I mean, do you see this guy the other day on NFT5 who put his crypto kitty up as collateral, collateral got 25,000 die for it? I was like, this is hallelujah, man. How cool is that? That is the future, man. That Absolutely. is the future. I know you take your decentral land and it's like, what? I couldn't even explain it to someone if I wanted to. Completely, right? That's what I realized. Well, that's what, that's what like, you know, decentralized should have gone with all along. <laughs> that yeah. You, you can buy this land. It's collateral now. It's like real land. It's like collateral. I know. It's better than real land. <laughs> it's better than real land. <laughs> I know. Is easier. Like, you know, no I processing fees. Well, so wait, Arjun, you, you got a lot going on, man. I love your passion. I mean, it's, it's exactly. does anyone ever tell you that you need more passion? Should you like come out of your shell a little bit more, man? Maybe a little bit? No, you're great. I, just bring it. It's, and, and I know it's late at night for you. So this is, you're just warming up, right? So this is great. Yeah. But it's almost like I'm hearing you say, and, and I'll be honest, I tried to get on the Matic the other night. I went on, I got everything set up and uh -huh. I, I did everything to buy with my credit card I see. and it failed on me a couple of times. That's not, a, that's yeah. not you. It was just me, but, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna come back. Right. So don't sweat it. It was, you know, right. I, when, when you're an early adopter, you understand there's pain along the way, but we'll get Absolutely. there. But it sounds like you're saying to me, Hey, Jeremy, everything you want to do 
on Ethereum in DeFi that you think is super cool. But right now, because like I've been around enough to know that you don't want to put a ton of money at risk the first time you play around with a new protocol. That's just not smart. But I also don't want to spend $120 in fees for my $10 option. You're saying, hey, don't sweat it. Come to Matic, put a little ETH and move it over to the chain. Go yeah. crazy. That's what you're telling me. That's that's exactly where I'm going with this, you know. So so see, in, even in investing, right? Like exactly. You're getting what, goosebumps now. No, it's, it's it's this is like this is exactly where you know I want to also like you know sort of go with and sort of put that message out and go with this exact same narrative. That see, like you know, like like normal people, like I, I'm I'm not a crypto whale, all right. So when I do you know Uniswap transactions and I'm paying like twenty thirty dollars, it hurts me. It hurts. Right? Whatever it it hurts, right? So now there is this is one class of investor. Then you have your crypto whale, which is who's doing a million dollar transaction. If you have to pay like thousand dollars in gas fees, fine. Like they you don't know care. that right. the gain is right. They don't care. But this class of investor, right? Who cares? In my opinion, is a much much larger pool compared to the crypto whales. Right? There are more non whales yeah. than whales. There are more non whales than whales. Simple right. concept. So right. if you can take all of this trading, all of derivatives options, all of these DeFi like sort of vehicles. Right, and you can just put it in an environment where gas fees is literally free. You can transact away. You can do all of your quick loan, sort of, kind of, you know, sort of uh, liquidity mining and sort of, you know, combined sort of thing to, you know, create even more property. You can do all of this seamlessly and two second block time. So literally, it's like immediate. Right. 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 You can get huge amount of adoption, and this is what I want. I want these people to come and experience Matic, to see that you know what and 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 look at the composability in the network like you know you have your you're doing your investing fine but hey let's go play some games right let's go to decentral games let's go and play to the casino let's go and check out decentral land let's play neon district and see what that's all about let's go to some you know nft sort of d apps and let's check that out that's that's essentially what i want i want like lots of people to come and experience this i know there are like these are the non whales and yes maybe i will not get 100 million or 500 million of liquidity in like in maybe one go what i get is adoption it's d5 for the rest of us i get community right? yeah yeah isn't that why we are doing all of this in the first place to help build the community so so this is kind of how we want to structure it and what we feel is once this action comes of course the whales will also come in due time like they will also see hey you know what this network has so much going on why don't i go there so so in your vision i mean if like what? How? What's the relationship long term between Matic and Ethereum, man? Because you need Ethereum, but you're sort of saying Ethereum's too expensive. <laughs> Come hang out with us. So what? So what we are doing right now is we are solving the problems of Ethereum. So we are not like like let's say like an we are not an ETH killer network. Like I said, we use Plasma, right? So we're constantly tied to ETH. So our entire commitment, we are committed to the cause of Ethereum, which we feel is the most wonderful and the most diverse, the largest blockchain ecosystem out there. so we are 100% fully committed to eth what we are telling eth users is that there are certain things which you can do on layer 2 right which which are so much more beneficial to you than doing them on layer 1 and of course there are certain things you can do on layer 1 so for example let's say you want to sit with your liquidity for a long period of time layer 1 is safe right but if you want to do daily micro transactions you want to go and like you know check out card tables like you, you don't need like a you don't going to go with a million dollar liquidity right you'll probably do that and 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 that's kind of where people you know will be more involved also and more engaged with the blockchain ecosystem right so this is kind of how we are sort of you know thinking about this is not like liquidity is not important but but this engagement factor is is in my opinion more important mm. and so start like working backwards from there right when you can build a larger community then all of these problems will be solved like more liquidity will come more people will come in mind like you know so something like that so that's kind of how i see the usage of this network and how our vision we feel works get lots and lots of adoption so that lots of people come and experience it and so our- it's almost like if i have my eth right mm-hmm. and i take some of it and i'm thinking this is my long term hodl eth right i right. go on layer 1 and i just drop it in wherever i wanted to do it and just do my thing and i just yeah. set it and forget it or That's maybe it. i put in the eth2 contractor but you're saying hey take that percentage that you want to be able to play experiment right. day trade whatever you want to do like you don't anything that 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 would not cons- like you you should never be constrained by gas again see you yeah, absolutely see the way i see it is simple like this see, you might trade in the stock market but you also have a 401k boom right 
so i'm not i'm not telling you know people on uniswap you take like 1.6 billion dollars in liquidity bring it all the way here then you should restart again no don't do that right, right, but there right, is right. money you put a, put aside to trade to actually use to experience blockchain right right, right. that is such a great fit for layer 2 and like i feel that more as more farms and you know as the layer 2 ecosystem grows and you see this is again not different from what ethereum it's themselves have proposed right so when you look at what vitalik has talked about like about like sort of having 60 bo shards and building that beacon chain data layer and then having roll ups to you know sort of solve for some of the scalability so in a way it's you know a layer 2 solution has already been alluded to mm-hmm. in 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 the way of a solution and and what we feel that eth 2.0 while you know is designed to be very high performance etc will take at least maybe 2 to 3 years to really come to fruition because we are not we have to you cannot ignore the testing cycle and things which right. might bring in all of those things which need to happen before we get to like production readiness so that's still a while away so for a long period of time you know layer 2 is a great way to solve for these problems and our you know our view or our eye is always on the future so even now we are building for the next wave of what blockchain is going to be and and like and that wave right and if 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 i were to just take 2 3 minutes of what what is blockchain going to look like what is the future of web you know let's try and understand like on the basis yeah. of what you see right liquidity nft fine what is the future the future in my opinion you know when you look at the philosophy we come from which is developer first right is to be able to offer the developer a platform on which you can build any kind of dapp and use any kind of technology to be able to build the best product you can possibly build so for example if you want to use pos plasma you should have the tools which you have today but we are also researching optimistic rollups we are also researching zk rollups we looking at all of the other future focused technologies which the founding fathers of ethereum have talked about hmm. and sort of given seminars on we are espousing the same credentials and sort of no no, no i won't say credentials but sort of the same you could say Path. principles yeah principles, principles and path of thinking right and and right. we we are building our ecosystem the same way so tomorrow if you're a developer whatever tool you want to use whatever you want to build you want to build your own chain you want to do whatever you should have the ability to do that and that we feel is what the future is like completely open build whatever you want and and the infrastructure is there for you right. and and with that mindset that is what we're building and some of those announcements like i said you know very exciting announcements will be making over the next 2 3 weeks of that vision and then you know once you see that you you know begin to understand exactly where i'm love the teaser great job on the teaser you're a, you're a great head of growth there you keep me hanging on every word i love it i want to <laughs> ask you um there are a couple ways i want to go i do want to um come and talk uh, i want i'm going to give you a little sneak peek of the next questions but i'll, I'll give you i'm going to give you two to think about and then i'm going to ask you one but i i have confidence you can handle it even though it's late at night first thing i want to ask you the first thing i'm going to ask you about is i want to know what are the risks of right. of being on matic right now number 2 is i want to understand the competitive landscape right. who else can i be talking to but before i get to this so let put those on the back burner think about that for a little bit just mull i want to talk about since this is the singularity net channel mm-hmm. and we all know that the future is ai enabled Definitely. how do you see AI and DeFi and Matic and crypto all come. What are the opportunities for people who are building on Singularity Net or passionate about Singularity Net to start bringing some of those AI capabilities, testing, experimenting, learning on on Matic as a much more cost-effective place than some of the other alternatives? What do you see there? So definitely. So of course, you know, it's broadly accepted that you know artificial intelligence will unleash all sorts of new capabilities. And I think the easy like mental model to like really understand this is essentially. to think of all of those points in the value chain where human beings need to make decisions mm. right once you identify those and you work backwards you will realize the ones which can be automated or potentially where you can put some sort of ai algorithm behind it right so let's take defi very simple example you want to let's say do some daily trading and you want to make some money so you want to like go after maybe specific liquidity pools maybe take a loan somewhere see what's going up and down now to analyze all of this you need some tool because some decision is being made also the decision which you will make of you know doing those trades has to be the most optimal decision right right you want to make the best decision the best chance of making the most amount of money that is where again decisions have to be made now this is again where you can potentially use some data and bring in some automation so this mm. is think about it this way right and you start with that mental model that where are human beings making decisions those are all of those areas where you can apply ai technology very very simple to understand so now that you have this then if you bring some sort of ai into this for example automated sort of investing right like which is being done like 
in microseconds and sort of right. you know is being constantly optimized you know from like an end goal so you say i want 20% return for example let's just say the algorithm works backwards and it tells you this is what you need to do for the next two months or three mm-hmm. months and it tells you some sort of risk so obviously if you say i want 100% more so then there will be higher risk and you know something like that so when you start thinking along those lines you begin to see all of these different like areas and that's kind of where you know we wanted to collaborate with singularity net obviously you know uh, extremely famous project uh, headed by some really really uh, strong and passionate folks as well so and and that's kind of when we started talking and we realized that you know there is this entire region which is unexplored and we are sure this is just the starting point so and and like by by that I, what what i meant is that with nft coming into defi and etc there'll be all sorts of interesting data models around this so that's kind of where you know we can bring some of the technology which singularity has developed and sort of apply it to this high performance layer whereby you know now doing ai potentially is possible where you know mm. if you had 30 seconds for a decision you can't but when it's 2 right. seconds you get a lot more data and then you can do interesting things you can do more trades so so this this whole so in some respects matic could be or is going to be the fertile sort of uh uh land on which the a- the ai if you will is going to accelerate because you can get the data faster you can execute you can do it cheaper and more and more people will say well why would i do it over here when i can do it over here and see exactly. what works in real time exactly so that's right. yeah that's exactly right because it's in matic the gas is so cheap that a typical transaction on matic is something like 0.00003 dollars so okay. it's like for yeah so for 10 dollars you can do like 3 million transactions so so now you don't care what the bot does like you know you don't care if the bot is doing even some wrong trade you don't care yeah. about that i can keep trading away you know obviously right, market right. go up and down whatever but this is possible now right so the possibility of high performance suddenly you know allows you to make these different kind of models which which you know every time i talk to a new dia it just blows my mind like wow like i had never thought of this i know and it's just 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 the best part of my job you know to connect to these teams and just understand their ideas it's just amazing that's a really powerful value proposition when you think about the fact that you know you, for 10 bucks you can do 3 million transactions when you know 10 bucks maybe gets you half a transaction <laughs> on the paid debt Yeah, exactly. That's really, I mean, so cuz cuz I think one of the things like we all obviously believe not all but everyone uh singularity net believes in the decentralized they not only believes like if we don't have the dec- decentralized AI future we're kind of screwed but that's a topic for a different podcast. Um <laughs> we'll talk about the surveillance state another time. But the the idea that there's actually a place where you can go today right now and very cost effectively build out models in defi in dnft or sorry that's redundant but whatever right. to yeah okay i got you that's really that's a good story man you are good at this job no wonder they hired you um okay <laughs> let's 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 put a pin in that for a second i want to come back to matic's not the only game in town yeah right, right. there are a lot yeah. of people out there there's a lot of people who understand this take off your matic you know take off your matic tattoo for a second i know you've got probably eight of them all over your body because you are passionate um who else is out there and what are they doing well right okay so so there are a lot of like like you know who's out there like you rightly said so there are a few which have like different kinds of approaches towards scalability so then of course you have like uh, teams like loopring etc which are doing like you know some research around zk technology things like that yep. uh there are others like for example um uh, for example there is uh, bsc also binance smart chain so binance an investor in in matic as well but mm-hmm. they've come up with like an, an interesting also evm compatible like sort of kind of a chain where also we have like a lot of interesting projects um and 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 so 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 there's a lot of sort of different types of layer 2s out there there's also uh, xdai which has got a more sort of a centralized maybe kind of solution where they use mm-hmm. a party kind of thing but it's it's also layer 2 and and they have like some traction so so there are several several out there uh, many of them are doing the technology part well so for example like i said that uh, i would say that for example investing in the right teams uh, many of them are well funded uh, elron for example is is sort of also trying to build an algorand and you know there's mm-hmm. several like that, you know fairly well capitalized have good teams yep. good talent so many of them are doing the tech part well i feel that the community building and engagement aspect i think is is really kind of missing uh, right. from, i would say most of them 
um, uh, simply because also it, it's just something which requires a lot of investment and time. The founders have been doing it nonstop for the last three years. I've been doing it nonstop for quite some time as well. Um, uh, so, so it's, you guys it's, must be exhausted by now. It's it's like a twenty four seven lifestyle. I won't like you know. I I won't like sort of lie about that. But but again, you know, like if you're passionate about the space, it it's, it's that's it's, true. I know it, it it's it's like what does Naval say? Do work that make that do play that other people think is work or something like that. Yeah, I'm I'm totally with to, you. You have to have that, you know, because what I feel is that like and and this is so interesting for me because I've seen a lot of other podcasts about you know with great entrepreneurs and and you know used to always hear this thing right. that you should do something you're passionate about and as to what right. what is this you know don't these guys ever have to pay bills i mean what is this what they saying but now you know i begin to kind of understand what they are saying because the only thing you can do 24 7 365 days a year is something you're passionate about right 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 if you're right. not passionate about it you will never be able to do it i know so, i know and you, know, you feel it you either know it or you don't and you feel like you can once feel. you fall in love with crypto it's it's like You're so gone. Hard, yeah. Oh, I know. I know. My yeah. kids are like begging me to shut up about it already because <laughs> every question always answers. I'm like, you know what solves this? They're like, yeah, we know, Dad. Blockchain. You know, it's like enough. <laughs> <laughs> we got that. Um, okay. So let's. So look, Matic. It, it's great story. Anyone who looks at your price chart, you you've obviously had some big ups. You had that mm-hmm. crazy down at one point yeah. where somebody flooded you up to. Well, we'll leave that aside. It's you made a massive mistake, you know, while reporting like a one I decimal. Know. Completely. How uh-huh. crazy is it that in a world like the world we live in, like one dude on Twitter can screw up one thing and your token tanks, like whatever it was, it was huge. You, that, that's why I always say, right? Like you have to focus on the fundamentals of, yeah. of any business. The fundamental is adoption, right? All of this token economics. If you have adoption, none of this matters, in my opinion. Like right, all of this, right. care of itself. It's like it's like you know, eating right or you know, exercising. You know, if if you do, if you stay healthy, do the basics. If, do the basics everything else is fine like so it's it's that's that's kind of what like our like at least my sort of complete like uh, focus so is you on. guys have the you guys are playing the long game we, that's that's exactly right like for us right. like we we envisage like a world where you know using esports using these kind of vehicles of gaming and sort of interesting nfts we can pull web to people into and and you know just you know so that they can start experiencing it and now with like high performance like like for example web to people used to using Netflix, Uber, they can right. see the same performance now, right? right? So you don't have that frustration or something like that. Right. So you don't have to sacrifice to use Web three, right? Exactly, right? Like you know, then you're trying to explain to people the technical reason, and they're not interested. Like you know, I want to trust me. If it were faster, you'd really love it. <laughs> Pretty much, right? Twenty right. seconds of waiting, like nothing has happened. Like you know, my Uber. I promise been... you, it'll confirm in ten minutes, man. Uh, Just hang in there. Now, like, you know? So, so yeah, I mean, like. So, so you can't have that. So you need to have like high performance, and then right. you, can, you know this kind of engagement, this this kind of love. For All right, people. but look, you you're 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 like a seven month old baby, also at the same time. Yes. So yes. what are you, 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 you're growing really fast? You're one of those kids who's growing really quickly, and you're like destroying stuff all over the house. Whatever, that's great. <laughs> my question, to, maybe not. My question to you is: Okay, objectively speaking, if you're a developer who's developing on Ethereum right now, mm-hmm. and you're you're sort of frustrated, unless you're You know, a whale-friendly finance app. You're not going to make a living on Ethereum, right? And you you'd have to go knock off Ave or Compound or somebody while you're doing it. So you're looking at all the options out there. We've talked about the benefits of going to Matic, your full service marketing solution, same language, speed, and all that. What are some of the risks that you think either developers or users should just keep in mind? Like, hey, we're still early in this game. What should you just be aware of? Hmm. Interesting, interesting. Unless you're perfect. So, so of course, you know nothing, <laughs> nothing is perfect. Then, right? yeah. So, uh, so there is always this. Uh, so, so one of the things you know, uh, just to be completely candid and honest about Please. this, is one of the things which people say, at least about L two, is that like so, so any network essentially a proof of stake network is sort of you could say built around what is staked on it. Right, that's you know, deep chain. You have so much staking on it and things like that, right? So the more value right. which is staked, less less there is a chance for the actors to go against the system, right? Like everybody is honest, then you give somebody a bribe, and then suddenly you know things change, right? There so something. Like that. So so what happens is that you have like let's say X value locked, right? Now somehow through through some you know like liquidity moving from layer two to layer one, you know layer one to layer two, things like that. Let's say the liquidity or flowing in your system now becomes like let's say two X. right of of what has already been staked so all the people now who are a part of a network have some incentive 
right to possibly cheat mm. right now now there are various you know mental models and theories around this a lot of people say that anybody playing the long game right would would not would not take such an opportunity because the moment you you do something wrong you will be banished from the network you lose your stake all of those things will happen you will get blacklisted so in most case you know it's not worth it right but there is always this very small prob- right. probability right right of this happening and which is what i feel that that's why there's been so much research around this like you know optimistic roll ups where you bring verification and all of that to layer 1 versus doing on layer 2 you know so increase security so there are solutions around it mm-hmm. it's not like they not solutions around la- solving these problems so layer 2s do have this problem solutions have already been proposed which we are implementing with zk zk snark so you move from fraud proof to validity proof so so it then it becomes seamless so we are developing those technologies to plug those gaps in in which are currently there in l2 which revolve around essentially huge amounts of liquidity suddenly coming and then there being like a precedence where something bad might happen gotcha. apart from this like from a risk standpoint i there is like i don't want to see any other risk i just wanted to make sure you were on your toes no that's a good answer <laughs> let, let me ask you this now i'm sure we're, we're we're about 40 40 minutes into it so anybody who's listening now has already gone out and got a bunch of matic tokens and probably staked and you're off and running so good for you we should have a little we'll have to have a tracking url to see how well what the conversion rate off of this <laughs> podcast is for you cuz as soon as i'm done i'm going to get try again but yeah. um You know, I'm sure you love, you know, it's it's like my kids, I love them all equally, but you have 80, would you say 200 dapps or something sitting out there, or would you say like give us one or two that you think are really worth exploring and experiencing matic to the fullest. Like who should we take a look at? And we can put that in the show notes also. No, oh, definitely. So I think, you know, uh, for those who are into prediction markets, you should definitely check out Polymarket. I think just the interface they've built how smooth it is. Uh mm. You know, from business technical standpoint, really flawless execution. Love that. Like, and and you know, if on the gaming fun side, you can try uh, Neon District, uh, mm. Mega Cryptopolis is also live now. And now that now that you can take that land and keep it as collateral, so you know you could definitely check that out. Uh, there are a few other uh, obviously uh, interesting DApps as well. Zedrun is there if you'd like to bet on horses, but now it's virtual and you can buy the horses and NFT and you can do interesting breeding things. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, so that's that's another interesting app. um then on the defi side we have easy fi which is like a compound fork you know where you can do all sorts of interesting things like you can stake and you can like lend borrow and you know all of that um there's oro pocket which also allows you know some interesting things around defi so so there are like bunch of different types of dapps we will be having this information up soon so we've like sort of we've sort of uh, tabulated all of this and we will obviously put that in the public domain so you can check those out but sure. i would say yeah, these three four games this prediction market a good place to start to you know see how smooth the experiences that's, that's great cuz every time i've tried to use a prediction market on layer 1 it's just been an absolutely painful experience so that was really um, that prediction too <laughs> my no only part. prediction is this is going to suck so <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome um all right well listen i mean i want to thank you so much for taking the time mm-hmm. and for sharing your passion which is clearly obvious the passion sells of every everything you mm-hmm. it's very impressive how you you guys have really thought about the full contributor experience to the Matic network and i think that that's great um if people want to find out more about matic you know matic.network i know is your your website where mm-hmm. else could people go what what do you recommend so i would definitely say check out our twitter um so we we do a lot of community announcements for all of our dapps like you know help them you know help them with their adoption things like that so it's a great way to keep track of all the different things we also publish this week in matic uh, which is also another twitter channel you can check out where you know we publish you know updates and you can click and you know you can learn more about them um so these are some great places to learn about the ecosystem and things like that we also have a discord channel um you can check out it's called matic dev and validator so for the more technically inclined a lot of conversations about over there about you know about our technology lots of questions answered things like that a lot of our matic senior devs are always on that discord channel right. so how those we also have a telegram community for those who are a little maybe inclined a little more on the crypto side where you can you know sort of have those discussions um and things like that so so there are like a couple of places i would definitely say start with twitter and then you know you can check out our discord or telegram and you know you'll be then you know you'll kind of see all the discussions happening and then you can be a part of the network as well Awesome. All right, I got one more question for you but it's like pie in the sky visionary future looking stuff. You ready? Okay, sure. Let's let's go for it. Okay, here we go. Here we go. So I I would argue that we're basically at the point right now where we're almost in like a post Bitcoin world, meaning that Bitcoin's kind of a given. Maybe there are a few people who still doubt it, but 
it's kind of like game over for Bitcoin. Ethereum is not quite at the same level because of the larger, you know, the awareness among the mainstream. Mm -hmm. But I think we can kind of say at this point, there's going to be a post Ethereum world where Ethereum is just a given. It's kind of like part of like windows, you know, it's just there. What does peering out into the future, what does that post Ethereum true DeFi world, what does that look like? What does it mean for people in India? What does it mean for people around the world? Like, to help us understand your your vision and what gets you passionate and motivated. Sure, definitely. So, so again, you know, you touched upon some very interesting points, and, and and definitely what we see now with mainstream finance investing in in Bitcoin, right? And and that's like a big landmark there. While it might be maybe small, uh, let's say uh, small investments compared to what they typically invest, but you got to understand these are people who are holders, right? They sit for ten years in capital markets. So, so, you know, a certain amount of volume has already come in and this is going to keep accelerating. So that volume is going to keep coming in and these are again holders. They're not doing this trading or whatever. Right. Holding. So, so what's going to happen, like you said, and it's already happened. Now, there are a couple of things that will happen, right? And we've already seen a vision of it and, and you've read about it as well. So what's going to happen is that this will now proliferate at an accelerating pace, right? Mm. Now, there will be a couple of different types of pro- proliferations, right? Number one, liquidity, right? With more, more and more, banks saying, okay, you know what, let's put like 1% of our portfolio somewhere. Maybe let's do something like that. Big pension funds might say, okay, let's pick up. Yeah. Like, so this is on, on the liquidity part, right? Then there is proliferation on the technology side where we, we are going to see like uh, sort of, so the ZK dream sort of realized where you have like sort of true privacy and like mm. every private, you have no idea what's going on. You can track nothing like all of that, very streamlined. So that is another side of proliferation. I think there'll be another very, very important side, right? Which is governments. And this is what really gets me really, really excited because once mainstream finance, which which essentially controls all the governments, gets into this, suddenly the laws will change and suddenly mm. all the lawmakers will also be on board. Hey, let's ratify this. So all of this will also happen. Once you have laws around it and proper legal structures, right? I don't know what the definitions are going to be, but some definition of what's a security, what's an investment, things like right. that. Once you have a legal structure, that is when the entire world, you know, starts changing around you. And we've seen this before. We've seen this with e-commerce, yep. right? It just comes like, you know, there is some policy and then there are some websites here and there. And, you know, slowly things are changing. You have your eBay, Amazon, and suddenly, woof, right? It's, 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 it's. Gradually, it's, then suddenly. Yep. Gradually, right? Then that's when you start seeing government bodies, big finance, mm. big agro, big medical sort of, you know, big pharma, start, you know, start implementing these technologies, ushering in like a level of transparency, a level of efficiency and a level of privacy and control never heard of before, right? And, and you can see what's also going to happen in, you could say like 2050 kind of thinking. You know, if you go yeah. totally make us wheel on this, right? There are a couple of interesting things that should happen. So look at what China is doing. So China is trying to, you know, create a nationwide cryptocurrency. Right. Right. And, and, and you can already see it, right? Like if you had to implement something like this, you can have a nationwide dollar coin. The Fed essentially is a, you could say a centralized validator of sorts, or something like that. Right. And, and all the transactions are going through that and everything which is happening in finance is now transparent. Right. So entire countries have now implemented a form of cryptocurrency and all the currencies are just like how today dollars hedge to the let's say the Indian rupee to the the NB and all of that, all of that will happen with crypto, right? And you'll have this, like sort of this entire crypto financial. So this, there'll be this entire layer, which is, you could say blockchain enabled. And then, you know, and then there will be services around it, around the side. So there will be, of course, you know, hardware infrastructure, decentralized and centralized. There will be AI, like what Singularity is trying to build. Then you can do those kind of things. But what will happen is that the blockchain will become an sort of irremovable and sort of a permanent part of our lives. It'll be a yeah. part of our daily experience when we use our apps, when we wake up. It's, in everywhere. it's it'll everywhere. It's everywhere. So yeah. like and all of these things are not so far away. Like I said, 2050, but you know, with the way things are like, you know, it could, <laughs> and it could be next Tuesday. <laughs> oh, it, could, it, could be, it could be next Tuesday, right? So it's, 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 it's so amazing. So this is kind of what I see in the future of how things are slowly starting to come together. And, and, you know, of course, government being a part of it, funds being a part of it, people, you know, want to experience it being a part of it. And all of this will then sort of get woven into your life. Just so like if how- you thought DeFi was crazy now, hang on. Like Man, it's about to get nuts up. I'm all right. Crazy. Last question and then we're going. Yeah. On what month and what year will the first central bank announce that they have Bitcoin on their balance sheet? Oh, man. 
Just pick one. We're not hold, no, no, you don't have to put any money on this one. Just give us a date and, and year. Okay, so like typical financial year. So let's say like April 2022. April 2022, a central bank will say we have disclosed we have Bitcoin in our, our reserves. We, we are now, we do crypto lending trading. Whatever. There you go. Awesome. All right. Arjun Kalsi from Matic. It's been an absolute pleasure. I've learned so much. I'm more passionate. I was passionate coming in and now you got me all lit up. So thank you very much for this. If you've enjoyed this discussion, please stay tuned for many, many, many more of these to come. Subscribe to the Singularity Net YouTube channel. Join us for the DeFi series and all the decentralized OS series uh, that you're, we're going to be putting out over the next couple of weeks a month. Arjun, a pleasure having you, sir. Thank you so much for the time and great stay great. safe and keep building, man. You're doing a great work. Absolutely. So, you know, and I wish you guys all the best as well. Thank you so much for having me. Thanks Bye. a lot. Bye-bye.